Um, yeah. You can do. Yeah, so I guess I'll just talk about Girl House first while, while we're figuring that out. Um, so Girl House Cinema, it's an ongoing program of short films and video art, all made by women, non-binary, genderqueer, and trans people. It's a mix of local and national and international work. Um, we present work from a variety of disciplines, narrative, documentary, experimental, conceptual, and our emphasis is always on kind of low budget DIY filmmaking. Um, yeah, it's not like a typical film festival. So instead of having one big event, we have multiple events throughout the year. Um, throughout this past year, we've been holding these online screenings, which have been fantastic, but we definitely miss uh, doing our, our live events, which um, will hopefully continue in the summer in Berlin, um, if, if things kind of slow down with, uh, with the pandemic, which we were hoping for. Um, yeah, so we completely celebrate, celebrate DIY culture and we focus on sharing works to all different types of audiences. And this can, can include audiences at uh, international museums. We have shown at the Institute of Contemporary art in Boston um, and also to like underground clubs, which here in Berlin, we mostly show at kind of DIY, DIY uh, venues. And um, yeah, so I guess that's it for Girl House. So I am the director and the founder and Eleni is a, a curator and she's also an artist herself. I don't know if you want to say anything. Yeah, so <laughs> hi everyone. I am Eleni. Um, I am an artist and astrologer. Uh, that's my background. And I've been collaborating with Girl House Cinema since a uh, while well now. We do various projects together, but mostly I'm coming from um, a visual uh, art perspective. Um, yeah. So we, we are going to uh, talk about today, like the let's have a party. Yeah. Online screening. Yeah. So yeah, and I also wanted to thank the Brattle for um, for hosting us, which they uh, the Brattle has been like one of our main venues for the past, like since 2014. So um, yeah, thank you Brattle, thank you Ned. Um, and uh, so this program for Let's Have a Party, it's a curation centered on all things that you could do before the pandemic. Um, and do them freely. So dancing, music, dating, socializing, and um, yeah. And it's also not just the positive side. So it's also um, also kind of the negative sides to kind of, kind of that idea. Um, yeah. So why don't we start with, uh, if you could each maybe say, what film you made or that you, what film you were part of and where you're located. Um, yeah, that would be great. So I guess, are they all unmuted? Yeah, yeah. Okay. we can start with Sinje. Yeah. Sinje, do you wanna go first? Yeah. Talk to us about your documentary. Sure. Um, yeah, so my name is Signe Rusnlum. Uh, I'm the director of Wrong Direction, a uh, documentary about an all women's band, uh, and I'm based in Oslo, Norway. Okay, then how about uh, Una? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm the director for The Sound of Sinking Ships, which was an experimental dance film. Um, and I'm in Philadelphia right now. So, Katrin? Yeah, Katrin. Hey, my name is Kat. Um, I'm the director, uh, producer, and also actor in Appetite, and I'm based in London, and it's a comedy short film. And Heather? Or maybe, are you muted? Yes, she is muted. Okay. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Heather Maria Ach. Um, I'm part of Them Power Productions and my film is called Flourish and I'm based in Brooklyn in New York City. Thank you. And actually, I, Same, or is that how you say your name? Okay. Yeah, you got Same. it. Peace everyone, my name is Same. 
I use she, they pronouns. I'm here on unceded Ramaytish Shaloni territory in San Francisco, and I'm the creator of Blood. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you, everyone. So who should we start with? Um... I think we should start, yeah, maybe with Sinya and her yeah. documentary film. We, yeah, we actually really, uh, yeah, we actually really enjoyed Wrong Direction and it's the only documentary in the selection. Um, do you wanna go ahead and tell us a few words about it? Sure, yeah, Wrong Direction is about, um, band consisting of six women. Um, the band is called Sliten Eliten in Norwegian. That doesn't say much to you. Uh, I think it means something like sick of the elite or tired elite. Um, they started practicing a couple of years ago and um, they're all very into feminism and um, far left activism, not far, but very political. Um, and I was just really um, interested in this group because the dynamic is so different. And also they, many of them couldn't really play an instrument or a few, and then they just started rehearsing every week uh, and progressed really quickly. Um, now they just released their first album so things have happened quite fast. And um, I think, yeah, this is one of the few films I've made which are only about joy, <laughs> mm -hmm. which are only happy. It's more of like a, a group portrait is kind of how I see it than uh, about one or two of the characters. And um, to me, just, I, or I hope it presents um, some part of the political uh, activism that's sort of merged with music in the Norwegian scene. Um, yeah, so that's a little bit about the film. Ooh. And how long was the production or how long were you shooting with them? I was shooting for a year. Um, I think the film, it's its a short film. So there's always a, like a question of when to end. Um, technically, this could have been a much longer film if you think about the lives, lives of the characters. But then I found it like the short format worked well for it. And it's also a very low budget film. Um, yeah, so, so a year, but I've also been filming them a little bit later. So they're still performing now and they're still playing now? Yeah, right now Oslo is in total lockdown, but it's, um, they were playing up until November when everything shut down again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I mean, for me, I absolutely enjoyed how it came together with Let's Have a Party in the creation of that because I think the documentary really shows um, gathering, like just, you know, six people coming together and with, you know, a, a common goal, purpose to create something. And then you just see that unfold in the documentary how they have a perfect dynamic, it just works for them and they just find their voice as a group. Um, I think it's just, yeah, it's just pure joy, as you said, like it really sits on that part in your heart where you're like, wow, like I really need to be seeing this thing that it exists and yeah, people are able to do that <laughs> somewhere out there. Um, yeah. Yeah, and the music was fantastic too. Yeah, and actually it's amazing because we get to see the beginning of the group. And so my question to you in regards to that is, how did you, um, were you from the beginning, like part of them? So like, did you say, hey, I want to come with, but you know, do the documentary or when did it start for you? Um, well, I know Maria, the woman who plays bass and talks about how she started the band through a Facebook thread. Um, as she was a friend of a friend. Mm -hmm. And I was looking for a project and I heard some new news that they were going to start a band. So then I just sort of 
um, intruded <laughs> and said, hey guys, if you don't mind, I want to film you. And I think in the beginning, everyone was a little bit skeptical, but now they're all really happy about it. Um, nice. It's really nice to have documented something which has been such an intense, but also very interesting part of, of your twenties, I guess. And um, yeah, so it was, they're in my circle of friends now, and also maybe in the environment that I usually hang out with. So it's, yeah. Um, yeah, why don't we transition to, uh, I think Kaseme has to leave a little bit early, so let's like, Okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, maybe if uh, yeah, if you can tell us about your project uh, about blood and your work in general. Yeah. Or, um, so blood is is a music video that we made at the end of 2019 and actually showed to our community right before lockdown. So it's it's a really special um, film and. It really centers on the movement that's happening here in the Bay Area and in the diaspora around reclaiming our, our true history and true essence as folks from um, what's now known as the Philippines. So I'm of Filipinx descent. I'm Biko Kapangpangan and Ilocano. And so much of my work is around decolonizing, re-indigenizing. And this song was really you know, created kind of to just like pull, I think, um, the spirit up and out of, of all of my kin. We have a word called kapwa that means shared self. And that, that's something that we call each other. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a beautiful film because like everyone involved are like dear kin, you know, everyone was casted kind of into the roles that they are like the the person who is playing the um like divinator is a divinator the person who is playing the um arbolario or herbalist is an herbalist the person who's um playing the hilot which is a filipino word for um someone who uses indigenous um massage technique from the Philippines mm -hmm. as a healer is actually a healer. So it was really special in that way. And it was filmed in our um, Filipino cultural heritage district here in San Francisco called Soma Pilipinas, which is, which has been around for, you know, generations and is really its own legacy. Um, and so just to have the opportunity to film at our black box theater, Bindle Stiff Studio and in the streets where we, Rome and, and bring it back to really the ocean, which connects us back to our motherland. It's, there's all those elements inside of that. That's fantastic. Yeah, amazing work. Yeah, um, I feel that what you've just described about the people who were casted, that they are actually coming from an authentic place. I feel that that's like generally describing your body of work, that it's all about reclaiming but also like just showing that original um the ancestry the lineage in your work but like just coming from an authentic place um how did you find your voice mm. when did when did that happen for you mm, wow that's a good question um yeah you know it's interesting because i definitely get folks who come to me and ask me like have you always been this way? And I'm like, hell no, <laughs> like, no, 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 no way. Um, but I think that finding my voice started to really happen um, honestly when I, when I started to become quite sick, like quite um, disconnected and detached from the people and spaces I was engaging in towards the last, towards the end of my college career. And it kind of forced me to, to reset. I had a big 
like mental emotional spiritual break and kind of had to like hide for a while and in that time I was I was I just I was really um fortunate and blessed to already have mentors and teachers in my life who kind of like really you know not like well it felt like that but um like gently nudge me um into into just understanding who I really was who I really am and so I would say through through dance through um places of of creative expression rooted in like you said authenticity and vulnerability and raw honesty and just really getting to share the deepest and and darkest parts of ourselves through those spaces that's really where I found my voice wonderful yeah great work oh let's uh I think we nope that there sorry did I unmute or did I mute someone no, thanks. Oh, so okay. Good. Well, let's move on to. Thank you, Samay. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you both. I think let's just transition to Heather. Will be are you? Um, oh no, it's not. Okay, sorry. That's an old good. message. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Heather, yes. To you. Well, uh, like I said, um, my film is Flourish. And also, thank you, Samay, for, uh, for your pronouns and the land acknowledgement. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, mix. And I'm here on unceded Lenape land in Brooklyn. Um, so I just want to throw that in there. Um, Flourish is about a queer dance party and drag show. It's a, it's a narrative uh, short. And um, it's about a drag queen healing from a, a toxic relationship and a young non-binary couple um, uh, experiencing non-monogamy. And um, my films, so again, my production company is Fem Power Productions. This is the second film in an anthology of shorts. The first film is called Flush and it's about, um, and that also screened with Girl House. So I really appreciate you all. Um, and it's about a group of queer hustlers uh, and a group domination session that goes awry. Um, I didn't necessarily plan to make a sex worker comedy, but that's what ended up happening and I'm really about it. So, um, you know, my goal is to put um, images of my like amazing, fabulous, intersectional, queer radical communities on screen. That's something that I'm not always seeing. Um, certainly there's tons of, you know, there are lots of like underground representations out there. Um, I come out of um, I come out of punk rock and DIY and live performance, and so previous to this, I did a lot of experimental work. And at a certain point, I decided that I wanted to play more with linear narratives because I wasn't um, I was interested in in uh, placing DIY content and characters in a linear narrative, you know, with an attempt at least towards a higher production value that I wasn't necessarily um, working with or certainly wasn't working with in, in the past. So um, I think that we really deserve to see ourselves, um, that everyone deserves to see themselves represented on screen. And um, I was actually working on a grant today where I was writing about, um, you know, even within my like, you know, subcultural communities, not every single person is into, you know, non-linear experimental narrative. And I do think there's a way that linear narratives are, people are used to them. And that even if you have an array of interests that there's something about that type of storytelling that um, a lot of people can access. And- um, This is- Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, there's someone. Sorry, I think. Anyway, I'll just close out by saying that, um, you know, when I speak to people, to my friends and people in communities, I ask them, um, you know, well, what, what do you want to watch? You know, if you could watch anything on TV and their responses over and over again are something fun where we don't die. And so that's the work that I'm trying to create. I'm trying to focus on joy and resilience. 
um, and uh, move beyond uh, trauma narratives and coming out stories. So co coming out stories are great. Um, we need to speak truth to power and trauma is real. Um, and right now what I'm working with is, is joy, resilience, fun and celebration to give that gift back to my communities. Thanks. Yeah. Um, Are you working on anything new now? I am. I, I'm working on a series. So I'm working on a series based on the world of my short films. And um, folks can actually watch uh, my first short film at fempowerproductions.com, my website. And um, I curated uh, a program a year ago now. Um, I started Fempower TV. Um, and our first program was Queer Content for Quarantine. And so I curated a lineup of intersectional and innovative um, short stocks um, and series, which you know I'd love to be in touch with um, folks on this uh, panel afterwards for potential curating moving forward. Um, but so Flesh is available there, and yeah, so I'm just you know working towards working towards this dream of a, of a series again. Like I just want folks to be able to like you know open up the laptop, put the projector on, and for there to be. Um, access to this sort of storytelling that, um, you know, it, it's, you know, it's, it's like taking, taking this subcultural content and putting it into this more traditional format. So we'll see, wish me luck on this grant. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, good luck on that. Yeah, I also wanted to ask about, because you have, and you've already mentioned, you have a background in theater and performance art and just wanted to ask and for you to, yeah, share with us how did that background, like how does it inform your work today? And as you say, like the series and how do you transition in new uh, forms of telling story? Great, that's a great question. I mean, I do think that my background in, um, in live performance and acting and theater absolutely influences what I do. Um, so not only do I have experience as an actor, but I have experience as an educator and as a teaching artist. And I worked in public schools for years and years. Um, so I think that that directly affects the way that I work as a director. You know, I, I've been working with people of all ages and all backgrounds for a very long time. And so I work with actors and non-actors, um, again, especially because I, I'm, I'm doing the type of casting where, um, you know, when, well, I can relate this as well. So, you know, even when I was working in, in theater, right, the way I even started writing original work or creating original content is because I felt like, I mean, this is so long ago, but um, uh, I wasn't seeing myself or anyone I loved or cared about reflected in the work that we were being given when I was in theater school. And so I started making my own work then, again, mostly in live performance. And then, um, you know, I spent many, you know, I did a DIY uh, tour and called Heels on Wheels. And we have an anthology um, that's available. It has like, you know, over 60 intersectional artists in that. Um, and so it, I had worked in film and television on other people's projects. And so it was sort of a natural progression, right? That at a certain point, I wanted to be the one with, um, you know, creative control, obviously co collaborating with other people. And um, what I love about live performance is that it can only happen in that moment. But what I love about film and television is that it can reach everywhere. So um, that's what's really exciting to me about that and, what, and, and one of the many reasons I was interested in working in that way, so. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah, um, do you have another question or should we? Um, Let's move on to Una. Thank you, yeah. Heather. Also, thank you. Your, yes. All of your responses are beautiful. <laughs> like you, you all Such are nice. very like well spoken. <laughs> and it's, it's. I always get so nervous. I'm like always ums ums, <laughs> and hearing people like speak so eloquently about their work, it's inspiring. Yeah, definitely. And that's also like coming again to that place of authenticity. Like yeah. I mean it's it's like you know it's the passion also yeah like, you know it's like passion, these people yeah. it's my community i represent them yeah it really comes yeah forward thank you for that um let's move on to katrin 
Hey, thank you, everyone. It's really cool to um, to meet you here. And I had such fun watching um, the party. It felt like a party, which was amazing after the lockdown and everything. Um, yeah, so my film is a short film, a comedy about a woman who goes on lots of dinner dates with uh, first dates, uh, men and women alike. And um, she orders lots of food and drink. And when the bill comes, she's nowhere to be seen. And we got the idea because we heard on the radio that a guy in the US did this with many, many women. Um, and he ended up in jail at the end. Uh, so the media dubbed him the serial Dine and Dasher. And we found that hilarious and thought, actually, if a woman did this, she would go differently about it because he had one picture uh, on all the different uh, sites he was on. Um, and yeah, that's that's how we got the idea and started working on it. And it was just to think about, okay, if a woman did this, she, um, yeah, she would just have a different approach to the whole thing. And um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was my first film. My co-director, um, Sue Mong Lee, um, is currently filming. Um, she's an actor as well, so she can't be here. And I should say hi, and she's very sorry that she can't make it tonight. Yeah, exactly. I was also going to mention Shimeng Lee. Um, yes, thank you <laughs> going up there. Um, yeah, absolutely. Your film, um, going from day to day to day, and you're also transforming every time so vividly. <laughs> yeah. that was, uh, how was it to be uh, the co-director and uh, star in the film? Um, I found it difficult because it was my first film um, and it was amazing uh, that, that Sue Mong was there and um, that we worked so well together. That was really, really good. Um, it was certainly stressful, but also as previously mentioned, when it's your baby and you care a lot about the film, then um, that's what you want as well. You, you do want to know uh, what is happening and have creative control over it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I guess the first half, I mean, at least for me watching, I was just, you know, admiring the cinematography. I think that's, it's just beautiful. Um, and then it was, I don't know, maybe like a few days in that I actually understood what is going on. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's good. That's um, good. Yeah. And I mean, for me, I really loved how it just turns like into this comedy drama. It depends on like how you're looking at it. Um, but yeah, it's just like, it has like a very nice, uh, yeah, way of moving, um, first like having the thrill of the of the formative uh characteristics and the amazing cinematography and then getting like deeper into the into the plot and what is actually going on um mm -hmm. yeah and just keeping you very interested in a in a light way yeah yeah it was a goal to to make something fun actually and i think during lockdown lots of people loved watching it and i think that the reason is that you wanted something light, something fun. Um, um, yeah, and you said about the um, the cinematography, Our um, that was Simona Pranoluti. Uh, she's amazing. Uh, and, and yeah, she was just so fabulous on set. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, I've, it's also very interesting to know that it actually is inspired from a real story. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I was like, wow, that's genius. I would have never thought that, but, um, but yeah, I guess <laughs> it's out there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Una, would you like to tell a bit about your um, experimental dance uh, video and yourself. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm an experimental animator. Uh, I do a lot of stuff frame by frame, um, and I've been working with film a lot recently. Uh, so this piece 
It's got some digital video, but also 16 and 18 millimeter film and hand-drawn animation. Um, and some of the films treated with bleach, so it's hard to, to read. The idea is that with these different mediums going in and out of each other, what you see is the dance itself and not so much the figure. Um, like some frames, you, if you took a still of it, you couldn't tell there was anyone there, but in the process, you've got the movements. Um, yeah. And well, where's the sound coming from? That's uh, a friend of mine who's a noise musician. Um, and the set is actually this underground venue in Philadelphia um, that has noise music, but also electronic music. Um, and I like that because the figure is really timeless, but then we've got this graffitied warehouse backdrop, um, which I think is a good tension. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, fantastic. Um, yeah, and do you um, do you have um, do you have da um, dance background? I do not. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you have like the interest in the in the figure and trying to and at the same time like developing techniques uh, with which you can you can work with. Mm -hmm. with um, yeah, I, sorry, go on. I'm really interested in pushing rotoscoped animation and that's animation where you essentially trace the live action, mm -hmm. um, but of working on how far you can abstract it to still read as the form, uh, which I think is really interesting with dance. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It was, yeah, it was very interesting. And I found that it was doing exactly that. It was moving from like the realistic image of, of the figure to uh, traces of it and the form itself. So I think from, from, from the online screening, it was the one that mostly stood on like formalistic elements. Like it was just more like technique and the visual elements of it and how they came together um, to create the narrative, mm -hmm. if you will. Is that how it, it was for you as well? Yeah, I definitely started with the techniques and what they could do to show dance as a concept. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. And do you usually show or present your work in more of a gallery setting or, or in a cinema, kind of a cinema of traditional way of um... um i think i would like to present my work in gallery settings more mm -hmm. uh, but i do show in film festivals um not so many in the u.s they seem less interested in experimental stuff mm -hmm. um and i've shown with girl house a few times before which always makes me really really happy um, yeah. definitely i like like working in things that loop, so not necessarily having a beginning and end. I think in yeah. an ideal world, this would be played on loop on a gallery space. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I guess a question that could go out to everyone mm -hmm. is, um, I think all but one film where uh, made uh, before um, before the pandemic before the yeah. pandemic yeah and I just wanted to ask whoever wants to take this question um how have you found like working during the pandemic and how if, and if in any way has it altered the way that you generally view your work and the ways that you're working is yeah is anybody? interested in answering this question. Yeah, sure. I can, I can uh, yeah. answer if, uh, and then you other guys just turn mm -hmm. on. Um, of course, it, it, I primarily work with documentary. It's, it's, um, it's been, uh, I think, challenging for everyone in, in my uh, business group um, to work because access has been limited <laughs> to yeah. all the to follow. Uh, also, uh, for the past year, I worked on a um, 
a film that requires access to uh, to prisons, and those have been locked for several months. Um, so, so I think it's 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 very frustrating to constantly plan things that get cancelled. <laughs> but um, but also I've seen an enormous amount of films springing out of, of the uh, situation we're in. And, and that's quite inspiring, uh, I think, uh, as a young filmmaker um, to see. Um, but yeah, it's, it's mostly been, of course, you can always drag the, the whole speech about how boring it's been, but, but uh, I hope we see like an end to it now and that that might give some more creative input than the last year has given. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, actually, I've read that you have been working on a, on a documentary on, your, on, a, on a debut of something. Was that interrupted? Right, I got uh, my first proper documentary finance last summer um, by the Norwegian Film Institute, which is, uh, of course, I'm very grateful for. Um, so that's the film I've been working on. It's about uh, party rape in, in Norway. So it's a bit more gloomy than Wrong Direction. Yeah. Okay, good luck with that. Thanks. Um, yeah. Definitely um, something that we need uh, more of a female gaze on to be, yeah. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> I'm actually interested in um, how you all acquire uh, or secure funding for, for your works, because especially with the, the larger productions, um, is it mostly grants or I know a lot of people do like Kickstarter, GoFundMes. Um, yeah, just one. wondering if anyone. No, grants, no. <laughs> like no, what's it? I mean, I'm like, I know I don't want to talk about it because it's so dismal. Um, yeah. So, you know. I mean, since no one else is jumping in, I mean, it's like, you know, a combination of so many things. Oh, someone's muted also. Yeah, yeah, I'm seeing this. <laughs> I live in the US. I mean, it's, you know, a combination, yeah, of, you know, grants and um, crowdfunding and all of these things. But again, it's like, you know, I mean, since this program is rooted in, in DIY, I'll say that, you know, institutional funding is institutional funding. You have to jump through so many hoops it's yeah. I mean for me grant writing is brutal um like I decided to do this panel today because I like to live but like I have a grant due two hours after this closes and I am sweating because it is so difficult to do and again to me you know you have to have the privilege of having the time to even write the grants the one that I'm working on right now is so extensive there's no way I could have done it without someone helping me with the budget without someone helping me with the pitch deck and again these are my collaborators who are community with me. And so, you know, I'm lucky enough to have people who are willing to donate their time, but um, it's just to me in the US anyway, it's a real problem. And so, you know, every sort of intersectional oppression that plays out elsewhere is playing out in that world as well. And, you know, on a positive note, one of the ways that my films get made is through community and through the, the shared resources of my communities. And so it's like someone has access access to this equipment and you know this person's willing to like work for a very low fee I've shot in every single room in my apartment at this point some more than once so you know a roommate will move out right before I'm going to shoot a film just happenstance and uh, then I dress that room to be whichever room it is so in flush the scene where the domination session takes place is the same room as the backstage um, area in Parish and so they were both just dressed differently for that and um yeah, that's what I have to say about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. That's so good, actually. Yeah, it just it's so telling about all the creative ways <laughs> one has to work <laughs> with to get get what go where they want. Yeah. yeah. 
And, you know, and, and at the same time, like I, I'm also making specific creative choices, you know, I mean, I tell my students all the time, you know, we can make films on our phones. Like I'm, ma I'm making the choice when I've made those last two films to work with, with the cast and crew that's, you know, 30 people, which is a huge amount of people to me. I mean, that's teeny tiny in the industry or whatever, but um, I wanted to have that experience. So I could make the choice to, you know, go smaller than that to make it more financially accessible, um, you know, and that's on me as well. So, I, you know, I don't think anything, you know, those sorts of things should stop anyone. I, I just have been doing DIY for so long. I was making a specific choice to do a different version of that. So, um, yeah, I mean, I always encourage people like make whatever you can, whatever you can, however you can with whatever you have access to and your creativity and ingenuity is gonna shine through. And a snap to That's that. Really nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. So, so dependent on the help of, of others, collaborators, definitely. Yeah. Like with Appetite, we had um, lots of different restaurant, uh, restaurant locations. And um, that happened because for months and months, I just went there and, and talked to the people and told them about the project and updated them. And um, yeah, many of them in the end just said, yes, you, you can chew it here um, when we're closed and then we give you a few hours. Mm -hmm. um, and that's so vital. We also did some crowdfunding and then chipped in our own money as well. And um, yeah, I'm, that's yeah. how you do it. Yeah. yeah, I completely relate. I completely, completely relate. Um, for blood, you know, we're wearing like traditional regalia um, and, you know, none of that was ours uh, or most of it wasn't at least. It was, um, we got to partner with a local boutique called Daily Malong and, you know, like the owner and founder of that, of that boutique is someone who I traveled to Mindanao, Philippines with in 2015 when we like started our journeys um, the theater that we filmed at Bindlestiff Studio, which is the epicenter of Philam Performing Arts, um, you know, they let us use it for free because no one was um, renting out that day. But that's also because I have a deep relationship with them. That's that's like where I really, you know, trained as a theater practitioner, and so my background is more choreography and, and theater, but because I was like, I have this song and this vision and everyone, you're gonna be a part of it. Like folks really, I think it's exciting, you know, um, Heather spoke to this, like we don't see our communities represented in the media, in TV and film, and especially in the ways that we believe they should be, we should be represented. And so I think having a vision that excites folks and allows, other people to tap into like their gifts and their resources that they don't get to use maybe in the ways they really want to um, kind of creates like that synergy and excitement but yeah we had like no budget I, I remember approaching Gorilla and Adonis of we are the ones who directed Blood saying like listen I don't have a budget but they were so down for the vision and you know we scraped some coins throughout the process but it was really a labor of love Mm. yeah wonderful how is it for for the people who don't collaborate with for una for example yeah. did you yeah sorry i mean um some of it is similar like there's the dancer and the musician who were down to just like because they liked the vision also um I got given the film from my film organization in New York City. Again, just like you tell someone your vision and people will help you out. Um, a local dark room let me develop there. Um, yeah, so similarly, I don't have a budget and do need the support of the community. And generally I find like you put in energy and if it's a good vision, other people will add to it, you know? Um, my other thoughts is 
I do music videos and other sorts of commissions and stuff. And if I put the work into the pieces that I like, then people will see it and like it and pay me to do something similar. And then I get money for doing what I love. Um, so almost just putting like trust in it. Like if I put something out there that is great, other good things will come from it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so after cute. this project, I got hired by a queer porn production company to do a rotoscoped porn. So like a similar style of animating. Um, so yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. And Singa, does, does this also speak to you with you? Have... Yeah, sh absolutely. I think um, the Scandinavian countries are a bit different from, from what I know of Britain and the US. Um, we have state funding of culture. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's very um, great, but also very hard because then everyone <laughs> everyone can apply <laughs> so the competition is usually quite high um, I made uh, two documentaries on very low budget um, the other one is about queer people in Tanzania uh, which I shot right before lockdown in 2019 and that was also funded by a couple of like uh, private funds uh, who cover who oh sorry my English is a little bit uh, they promote you know debate and free speech and human rights and stuff like that um, but I also used a lot of my own money um, I'm originally a journalist so I used to combine my work in the media and then use the money I earn there for funding <laughs> my own projects. But um, I started working with a professional producer a year ago and that's really changed things for me. So I'm now one of the people who gets the public funding, uh, which is really nice. But there's been a lot of work to come there, um, which have made me absolutely no money, uh, but I, I'd be quite happy to be able to do it still. Yeah. Great, thank you. Um, we are in the last few minutes, so I would like to maybe ask if you want to add something on your, um, anyone of you? Or if you to... have anything to plug, any yeah. future projects you want to talk about. Um, yeah. Yeah. Your last notes. <laughs> I'll, take I'll take something i want to invite you all to um a festival that we're hosting virtually from may 7 to 15 it's called urban and indigenous and it's it's really like um all about intercultural and intergenerational exchange and the theme this year is called between worlds and we're really looking at liminality and and i don't know how it feels where you all are but here in the bay I mean, everyone's like, not everyone, but most people are getting vaccinated. And, you know, we're really, I think those like in the inquiry of like where we're at and where we're going, we're really trying to figure out, um, yeah, what's needed, what's needed for our, us, our communities to, to get to the other side of this. So um, I'll be in touch about that if y'all are available. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, all right. Well, thank you all so much. That was super informative and yeah, really wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> thank you all for being part of this. Um, and I guess thank you for curating and, and thank you for focusing on, you know, DIY and independent work and um, so appreciative. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, uh, this was wonderful. Um, it was great to um, get to know you all a little bit better and hear about your work and projects and aspirations. Um, yeah, good luck to you all. And uh, probably see your work again at Girl House. Yeah, always, yeah, please keep in touch. Yeah, send work over. You can send work directly to Girl House too if you've previously shown. Yeah, we're pretty laid back with the, 
submission like entries and how it's how it all goes down yeah love your work thank you so much good luck heather with your prompt yeah. thank thank you. You. Yeah, good luck. Good luck. Good luck. let's make this series yes. all right. Bye. 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 Bye.